Hello everyone, my name is Naveen Desai. I'll be talking to you today uh, regarding certain few uh, important tips that you need to remember while uh, vitrification. So let's uh, get on with it. So initially the most important aspects are you have made a freezing sheet or a vitrification sheet for the uh, patient or for the couple or for uh, you know if it's a donor then for the donor or embryo donation then for embryo donation. So you have this uh, sheet of data that you have um, you know prepared and you have kept it at the workstation because it's very important that you have it always right in front of you because it just gives you more control uh, over the vitrification process. Uh, along with that, it is also important that you have the exact same coding on the sheet as well as on the cryotop or cryolock or whichever device uh, you decide to freeze on. Uh, once you have all that in place, uh, it's important that you recheck on the uh, media that you have kept. So you have to remember that the media that is required for freezing or thawing has to be kept out 30 minutes prior to uh, beginning the process of vitrification or thawing. So it's important that you keep it. Now this uh, media that is uh, removed or aliquoted 30 minutes prior could be aliquoted in multiple uh, dishes. Uh, here I have a 90 mm dish where I have removed the vitrification media. But you also get a dish which is a repro plate which is designed by uh, one of the kit making companies. Uh, this is from Kita Zato, uh, uh, which pioneers in say vitrification and thawing. However, uh, there are other all very good uh, vitrification medias coming from uh, companies such as Origio or Irvine Scientific, uh, and it depends upon which say uh, kit the lab uses. Uh, and all these uh, kits that I spoke about are uh, well researched on and have shown to have very good equal say results. Um, so one is that repro plate, one is a 60, uh, 90 mm plate, the other is a 60 mm or smaller dish. Now depending upon which protocol you use or which uh, kit you use. So the protocols are kit dependent. So when I use the words protocol it means which kit you use. Uh, it will vary your usage of consumables. So you need to have all of these prepared before you start the vitrification process. Also, when I mentioned about aliquoting this media 30 minutes prior to starting the process, it is critically important that you aliquot this and keep it aside on a cold surface because vitrification and thawing as against all the other processes in embryology occur on room temperature. When I say, say about cold surface, I mean room temperature. Cold surface is just a relevant term that we use on a day-to-day -day basis to differentiate between a cold surface and a warm surface. A warm surface for us is 37 degrees on which all the other uh, laboratory procedures are done. So this is a separate vitrification unit uh, um, which is at room temperature. Along with that, right now for the video, uh, video purpose, we have this very bright tube light on. Generally, uh, the IVF laboratory doesn't have such bright lighting and it is considered a very good practice to have as dim lighting as possible. Okay. Uh, similarly, even for vitrification, the dimmer the light, the better it is. And if uh, there is some proce procedure for which the lighting of the uh, IVF laboratory is lit up. In that case, the aliquoted media, you cover it up with uh, some say uh, lid or you know some cover which obstructs the light to ensure that you get maximum uh, output from the vitrification uh, say process. All right. Um, along with that, I also have a small uh, you know container here containing liquid nitrogen, which is extremely important when. Uh, you're doing the vitrification because uh, once you finish loading the uh, eggs or the embryos on the particular device it's critically important that you dip it immediately in liquid nitrogen. So let's go begin with the few tips that I was talking about. To begin with the first and the most important tip is about how many number of eggs or embryos do you need to uh, vitrify or freeze on a single device. Now as per good practice it's always recommended that you freeze or vitrify four oocytes, three day three embryos or two blastoses on one particular device. Now we know that there are uh, a lot of permutation combinations we can do but to get the maximum output or the best survival it is important we stick to these global standards. 
Uh, I have seen labs or I have myself witnessed that there have been more than these number of uh, uh, eggs or embryos being frozen on a single device. But don't do that. Always freeze maximum to four oocytes on a cryotop or a cryo device, uh, three day three embryos and two blastocysts. Okay, so that is tip number one. Okay, uh, tip number two is when you are following a particular protocol, now it depends which protocol you are following. Generally, for a day three freezing, you have to follow a 13 minute protocol uh, as against a day five, which is a 15 minute uh, protocol. But Depending upon which protocol you are following, you move the uh, embryos which are immersed in uh, a particular say a solution from one solution to another from time to time as per the protocol. Now when you are doing this movement, okay, for example when you are moving the embryos from ES solution to the vitrification solution which is the VS, it's important you just don't let it stay there and you know let it rest for the uh, amount of time which is specified it is important to keep aspirating this these uh, say embryos for, uh, in the respective say vitrification medium and removing the surplus out of it for example this is the vitrification system so if i say wash the embryos once after the embryos have been say dispersed back into the vitrification solution the remainder in the stripper has to be let go outside so like that you wash it three times in one vitrification drop then you move it to the second vitrification drop and then you're ready to freeze after 40 seconds now it is important to note that the reason they specify two vsvs is because for the same reason that you move it from one BS drop to another and when you are doing this movement you keep aspirating it and washing it otherwise the protocol has no significance to put two of the same drops next to each other all right so that is tip number two tip number three is once you have loaded the uh, embryos or the eggs on the cryo device it is important to you know drop the uh, or rather immerse the particular cryo top immediately into the liquid nitrogen and you know shake it evenly now immediately inside the liquid nitrogen is because you avoid uh, the embryos or the eggs um, contact with vapor and that is not a good sign for any vitrification process so it has to go directly into the liquid all right if you see even now there are a lot of vapors here so if you are slow into it it comes in contact with the vapor and it is not good so it's important you immerse it directly inside and have a good shake now a good shake uh, for the cryo, cryo device is important because it helps out evening the temperature in the liquid nitrogen tank and that does not hamper the vitrification process and that uh, ensures safe sticking or safe uh, say loading of your say embryos and eggs on the cryo device. Once that is over depending upon whether it's a closed system or an open system if it's a closed system. Um, you will definitely first seal the cryo device and then immerse in liquid nitrogen. If it's an open system, remember you have to cover the device immediately once you have dipped it inside liquid nitrogen because not properly covering it is going to cause a uh, you know or rather going to hamper the uh, embryos when you are planning to remove it from your say cryo tank while doing the thawing process. So that is tip number three. Okay. Um, Tip number four is something which is done during the process um, and it can be considered as a positive tip or a neutral tip is whenever you are you know loading the embryos on inside the equilibration system or the ES and uh, you are allowing it to rest there for 10-12 minutes for those 10-12 minutes irrespective of the lighting of the lab it's important just to keep a small cover on it what I do sometimes is generally I have either a sterile glove packet or the uh, sterile um, say cryotop cover which after removing it's still there I just lay, lay it over the dish to cover the drops to avoid additional lighting going on it. Uh, also another thing important about the lighting is when you are not using the microscope on the vitrification system please ensure that the light of the microscope is shut or you have moved the particular dish from below the light. Why? Because there is no point keeping the light on, the light is coming from below and you are covering it from the top. There is, I mean, it, it's going to make no sense, right? So it's important that you shut the light off and you keep it aside. 
okay so that is uh, the most important uh, aspect regarding lighting and the last and the most important part is documenting your freezing it is important how your freezing went for example sometimes um, you know these are also manufactured products the cryo devices are manufactured products you know they come out of a machine so although they say that it's 100% consistent you might be ending up using you might end up using a cryo device which is faulty okay so it could because of which it could be very sticky or because of which it could be difficult to load or drain out the media from the cryo device so that is supposed to be documented because when you are thawing if the thawing process results in non survival of your eggs or embryos you have something to look back to analyze why this could have happened okay so it's important you write the timing how much it took to freeze the uh, eggs or the embryos as well as how it went whether the loading was good the draining was good or if there was any issue regarding that okay and although i keep saying that this is the most important part there is one more part but uh, one more point rather which is important but it varies because there are two school of thoughts about the draining of the media that you uh when you load the eggs or the embryos on the cryo device now some uh, say experts or some uh, embryologists are of the thought that drain as much media as possible whereas there are some school of thoughts which says you can leave about little media and it's not e extremely important to drain off the complete media so that is still being debated and once a consensus come probably we all will know uh, how much amount of media is to be kept but if you ask me my practice is i drain off as much media as possible and by far i have got fantastic results on my thawing so touch wood i'm going to keep continuing doing that as long uh, as well as following these small critical five points that i told you and uh, remember that if you follow these points along with what good practices you are doing you are going to see tremendous say um, you know improvements in your survival rates uh, improvements in your freezing technique you are just going to have more control over how you practice say freezing and vitrification or thawing so uh that's about it from me uh for now but uh, i'm i'm eagerly waiting to make the next video and uh, see you soon on the next uh, video so thank you and keep tuned in